four. Practice set number four. First question. Find the derivative of arctangent. So find the derivative of arctangent xy equal to e to the y minus x over x plus y. So we want to find the derivative of all that. Now, since this is going to be implicit differentiation, the best is to avoid the quotient rule, because that will be one big lump here. So best to rewrite this as x plus y times arctangent of xy equal to e to the y minus x. And um, what might be even easier is if you take a long of both sides to bring this one down, and then you have long of Remember, long of AB is long of A plus long of B. But if you have long of ABC, like so multiply all together, is same as long A plus long B plus long C, right? So if you take a long on both sides here, you're going to have a long of X plus Y arc tangent XY equal to Y minus X times long E, which is 1. Long E equals to 1. So this is now the same equation as the original one, except I have to rearrange it a little bit. Now, then I take the derivative of all this. It should be a bit simpler. Now, you have to remember the derivative of long u is u prime over u. And also the derivative of our tangent of u is u prime over 1 plus u squared. Okay, you got to remember these two to do this question. So, the derivative of long of something is the derivative of all that top divided by itself. So, I'm just going to do it in two steps. x plus y, arc tan, xy, all in square brackets, prime, meaning I will take the derivative of that later divided by itself, which is x plus y, arc 10, xy, okay, equal to right hand side, the derivative of right hand side is y prime, minus 1. Okay, so right there, I now have this to take a derivative of, which is a product, it's this times that, so the derivative of this times that is, the derivative first part is 1 plus y prime, times arc 10, xy, plus the derivative second part, leaving the first part alone, the derivative second part is arc tangent something, which is derivative of that something, divided by 1 plus that's something squared, according to the arctangent derivative rule, and all divided by this thing. Now, instead of writing all down, I would say, let me call this one A, in circle A, all that is called circle A, that is going to multiply by y prime minus 1, that's going to be A, y prime minus A. Okay, so now I notice that there's a y prime here, there's y prime somewhere going to be there if I multiply them out. So, I'm going to... Um, Let's see, I'm going to call this one B, and all that, C. So this is going to be B, plus B, Y prime, plus C, times whatever the derivative of that, which is 1 times Y, sorry, 1 times Y, plus X times Y prime. That's just this part. All that is just nothing to do with derivative anymore, so I, which I call C. It goes to A, Y prime, minus A. So, if I expand this out, first of all, I can move the B over, minus B, and I can move this guy over, it becomes a minus a, y prime. Uh, then I have, a, if I expand this part, it is c times y, plus x times c times y prime here. You know, if I fold these out, then it equals to minus a, minus b. And obviously this one has nothing to do with y prime, so I can bring it over, minus c, y, cross that out. Now the only thing I have left is y prime, on the left hand side, which I will factor out as y prime, but then whatever I write in the brackets, will be what multiplied the y prime with. So that's a negative a circle plus b circle plus x c circle, that's all in front of y prime, is equal to negative a minus b minus c y. And then of course I'm going to divide left and right by this. So minus a plus b plus x c circle. Okay, now I can now refill in what my a b c stand for. A is, a is all this, so I'll write down x plus y arc 10 x y. That's my a. Well, I might as well write down the, at the bottom. R10 bracket xy. Minus b. b is this guy, which is just R10 xy. And this is plus R10 xy. And then minus c times y. So, or y times c. c is all this junk, which is x plus y in brackets divided by 1 plus xy all squared. And then the bottom is plus x times a c, which is x plus y all over 1 plus xy all squared. So, I think that's it. We don't need to simplify that anymore. Um, so that's the one way of doing it. Now I see that in the uh, answer, they actually replaced all the arc xy here. They replaced all these arc xy by this thing. 
So which we could do, okay? We could replace the all the art x y by e to the y minus x over x plus y minus e to the y minus x over x plus y minus y x plus y all over one plus x square y square all divided by and of course this is negative x plus y times e to the y minus x over x plus y my, plus e to the y minus x over x plus y plus x x plus y one plus x square y square and um, and then if you simplify this a little bit for example these cancel with that these cancel with that and then um, you can also let's say get a common denominator and factor out e to the y minus x for example anyways answer will be the same all right so i'm going to redo the arc engine x, y equal to e to the y minus x over x plus y again, but without using long both sides and see if we um, get the same answer. Now recall that derivative arc tangent u is u prime over 1 plus u squared. So the derivative of the left-hand side then is x, y all prime, that's u prime, over 1 plus x, y all squared, equal to the derivative of right-hand side is quotient rule. So the derivative of top is e to the copy itself times the derivative of the exponent, which is y prime minus 1 times the bottom, which is x plus y, and then minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 1 plus y prime, times the top, all divided by square of the bottom. Now, at this point, you have a decision to make. Either you expand it all and factor out the y prime, which will be a lot of, uh, you know, tedious lugging around all the variables here. So one thing I tend to do is I, assign, I, I, I will assign variables to the part so that I don't need to keep copying them. For example, um, here, I'll probably just call it a, and here, I'll probably just call it b. Okay, I don't think there's anything we can simplify there. Anyways, I'll show you what I mean uh, later on. But what x y prime is product rule, one times y prime, sorry, one one times y plus x times y prime, all divided by b. Okay, and then this part I don't need to do anymore. I just need to factor out this. But before I do that, I'm going to write uh, this over again. And then if I do that, I'm going to call this one. Well, I already called this one A, so I'm going to call this one C, and I'm going to call this one D, okay? So, now, if I split this, I'll get Y over B, plus X over B Y prime. Now, let me forget about circling them, because there's only one B here. And this is equal to Y prime C minus C, <coughs> plus, sorry, minus, if I fold this D out into the 1, so D minus D Y prime, all over A. <coughs> Then I will factor out the y prime here, so y prime c minus d, and plus c, uh, sorry, minus c minus d, all over a, all over a, right? <coughs> I'm going to split that into the part that contains y prime, and the part that does not contain y prime. So, and then here on the left hand side is x over b. Now, actually, I can cross multiply the whole thing times a over here, times b over there, then I will get real fractions all together. So in other words, I multiply a to the left hand side, all over, and b to the right hand side, all over, then I simply have no more b's down here, but a's up here times everything, and this one times b everything, so that will be a y plus a x y prime <coughs> equals to b c minus d y prime minus well or minus b bracket c plus d basically, so negative c b minus c d negative c b minus c d right? Then I can factor out or I can bring the the um, the y's the y primes to one side a x y prime minus b c minus d y prime equals to bring this over minus b c plus d minus a y. Right, so bring this over, and then if you factor out the y prime like so, then y prime by itself will just be this over this. So I'm going to rewrite it minus a y minus b c plus d all divided by a x minus b c minus d. Now the two negative sign up there can be factored to the front, so they become positive. And then you can plug in your whatever A and B and C stand for. So here's negative sign in front of the whole thing. A is um, A is what I call x plus y squared. So x plus y all squared, y. Okay, there's a y here. Plus b. Now b was all this. So bracket one plus x square y square times c plus d. C was this lump. x plus y, and d is this lump, but that is a e to the y again, so, and there's a, there, there does not include a negative sign, only this one. So, 
So I could write this again, but this can naturally be factored out to e to the y minus x again. So lambda with x plus y plus 1. Okay, and the bottom, a, again, was this one, so x plus y all square, but x minus b, b is this, 1 plus x square y square, and c, which is e to the y minus x, x plus y, but minus t, so minus, basically, e to the y, which factors out, so minus 1. So that will be the, um, the same answer as your teacher's answer provides. But if you did the trick of what I did, assigning part of the things uh, to be a, b, c, d, then you'll be a lot simpler to lug it around. Um, in terms of speed, in terms of time, and accuracy, so that you're not copying around sometimes in between. So that's probably a, a good trick to remember. Problem two, find the double derivative at x equal to zero of the function y q minus x squared plus 2xy squared equals to one. Find y double prime at x equals to zero. So all you have to do is find second derivative, okay? So the way we go about doing this is implicit differentiation to derive this one, three y squared y prime, chain rule, minus two x, plus product rule, 2y squared plus 2x, 2y, y prime equals the derivative one is zero. So that's your first derivative, okay? Now, what we need to do now, though, is at this moment, we need to find out what y prime is at x equal to zero. So, because we will be, we may be needing that later on. So we need that. Well, the way you get that then is plug in x equal to zero in here. So that was, this will be zero. Uh, and not only that, you need to know what y is when x is zero. So it's actually not too difficult because if you put zero into the original one, you get zero here, zero there, so y cubed equals to one. And cube root of y cubed is positive one, not negative one. So that means x equal to zero, y is one. So therefore, when you find the y prime, you also need what y is. So in this case, for example, I have to put one in here. So three times one, y prime, minus two times zero, so zero, nothing, times two times one, plus zero, equal to zero. So y prime in this case is negative two over three. So y prime is negative two over three. So therefore, y prime equals negative two over three at x equal to zero. Okay, now we need to know what y double prime is, so we have to take a derivative of of the this equation again, but implicitly again, okay? So the derivative, this is the product rule again. So six y, y prime, okay, that's this part, times y prime plus product rule, right? So this, copy it, times the derivative of that, which is y double prime now. So that takes care of this, minus the derivative of this is one, uh, two, the derivative of this is plus 4y, y prime, okay, which uh, the power rule again. Now here's a product rule again, but there are actually three products. One, two, three. These are different. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is actually plus 4xy, y prime. Now you need to take a derivative of that. So by product rule, and the right-hand side is still zero. So actually, we can do uh, a few things at the same time. So I can now plug in one for y, negative two-thirds for y prime. So I have six, one, negative two-thirds times negative two-thirds plus three, y is one, so times one, y double prime, which we need to solve, minus two, plus four, times y is one, y prime is two-thirds, or negative two-thirds, plus four times whatever that is, okay? Now, the product rule says, take a derivative of each component one at a time, so the derivative of x is one, so one times y, y times y prime, plus the derivative of the second one, leaving the other ones alone, so y prime and y prime, plus the third one is y double prime now, equal to zero. So that is the derivative of three things. So if if you now plug in one for y, well, x is zero, so this is gone. x is zero, so that's gone. y prime is negative two thirds, so I have negative two thirds here, times four, equal to zero. Now, as I go through this, I'll simplify this. This is negative eight over three. Negative eight over three. Eight, four is same as four over one. So this is plus three y double prime, and this is divided by two, two times two times two, is, well, negative negative is positive, so eight over three. 8 over 3. Oh, this cancel with that. Perfect. So 3y double prime, uh, bring this over, becomes positive 2. Bring that over, becomes positive 8 thirds. So that's all together, what, 6, 14 over 3. And then so y double prime is 14 over 9. Divide both sides by 3. So that appears to be correct. So question number 3 says, for a ball thrown vertically upward, its height after t second is given by the formula of, by the equation of s equals to 20t minus 40 squared, measuring meters. So what is the maximum height? Well, the maximum height is when the s doesn't go any further, so the derivative or velocity is zero. So the derivative or the velocity here is 20 minus 8t, and where that is zero will tell you what time it is when it reaches maximum. So 20 equals to 8t, so t is 20 over 8, or 10 over 4, or 2.5 seconds. So when time is 2.5 seconds, 
still will reach the maximum height. Well, what is the height? Well, then you have to put 2.5 into the S. So 20 times 2.5 minus 4 times 2.5 all square. Well, 2.5 is basically 10 over 4, right? 10 over 4, we said it. Minus 4, oh, 10 over 4 squared. So 10 over 4 times 10 over 4, these cancel. And this cancel with that with 5, so that's 50. 50 minus 2 goes to this twice, 2 goes to that 5, 2 goes to that once, 2 goes to that 5, so minus 25. So it's 25 meters. So that's where the uh, maximum height is. At the time, t was 22.5 seconds. So they say, what is the maximum height? The maximum height is therefore 25 meters. But they didn't say when, but you know now the when is 2.5 seconds. They say, what is the velocity of the ball when it is 24 meters above the ground? Well, so in other words, when the height is 24 meters, what was the time? But the thing is, when it is 24 meters as the position, 24 meters as the position, it could be on its way up or down, like so. So this, at this 24, because I know that at 25 is the maximum, right? But 24, you could be going up, and, or at the moment it's going down. It's just at the height of 24, you will have two times when when the height is, uh, at those two times, they're both the height being 24. So we'll solve for it. So that means minus 4t squared plus 20t minus 24 equal to 0. Divide everything by 4, negative 4. I will have negative 5 plus 6 equal to 0. So t minus 3 t minus 2 equal to 0. So there are two times, t equal to 3 or t equal to 2. That tells you that this is probably 3, this is probably 2. Uh, exactly, you see 2.5 is right in between that reaches the maximum. So anyways, uh, the, the t equal to 2 is actually on the way up, t equal to 3 is on the way down. To prove that, you can put the 2 into the derivative. You should see that it's actually positive, and this is going up. If you put 3 in there, you'll get negative, that means on the way down. So they say, what, uh, what is the velocity of the ball when blah, blah, blah? So in other words, when t equals to 2, what's the velocity? When t equals 3, what's the velocity? So you just need to find what v is at t equal to 2. So you plug in the derivative, which is basically um, basically this equation here. So 20 minus 8 times 2, 20 minus 8 times 3. So 20 minus 16, 20 minus 24. One is positive 4 meter per second. One is negative 4 meter per second. You have the answer in meter per second because they gave you the units. So the answer should be the velocity of the ball when it is on its way up at 2, uh, at uh, on its way up when the height is 24 is 4 meters. On the way down at the height of 24 is negative 4 meter per second towards the ground. So, so that is um, question number three, and that's it. Only three questions.